everybody, welcome back to Alum House Sound. I'm Dave, and today we're gonna to do a quick Q&A. Now this question is about a CD recorder. Many people have an analog setup and they've got their congregation or their venue has historically made CD recordings of their events. Maybe it's a service, maybe it's a worship night, maybe it's a band, maybe it's whatever they're doing, uh, a speaker coming in, uh, they might record that right onto a CD. I know a lot of you young guys are like, What's a CD? Right, so before we had these big CDs, which were black, and we called them records, and then later on we went to tapes, and then we went to CDs, which are small circular things that you can, yep, and record music to, and now we just have digital stuff. So let's get into the question, we'll pop it up here, and it says this. Stephen Sams says, I just received an X32, and I'm in the process of setting it up. I know you can record via the USB with a flash drive, and I intend to do so, but I also want to record to an external CD recorder that we've been using with our analog board. Since it doesn't have a tape input or tape output, per se, on the console, how would, how would you hook it up and control the sound to the recorder? I assume you would use an aux RCA outputs, but since I haven't gotten into using it yet, I'm not sure how you would control it, the output volume that is. Thanks in advance. So Stephen, we've got a couple different options and I've already replied to you uh, in the comments section, but I wanted to make this video because there are a few options and I want everybody to know about what those are and how to use them. So first off, let's dive into the console. We'll take a quick look at the onboard recorder, the thumb drive version that you had mentioned, and also how we can set up a great mix that we can send to the thumb drive as well as your CD recorder. And we can sum that down to mono if we want to, or if you've got stereo, we've got options, lots of options. So let's dive into the console and take a peek at that. All right, so we're taking a look at my scene here for my church. And one of the things we want to start to consider when we think about recording or sending to a CD recorder or the thumb drive, what is the best thing or type of signal to send? We've got two options. We've got stereo and we've got mono. Now, a mono signal is really easy to set up. It's really easy to build and craft and send out. But a stereo signal is usually more ideal from a bigger picture, a broader perspective tells us that stereo is going to translate better across multiple mediums. Now, I also love to build two mixes, only two mixes. We've got one for the house, which is what we see here, and this mix goes over to our main fader, which we can send to our house. Everything else, anybody that's not in the house, maybe it's a foyer, maybe it's your recording, maybe it's a live stream, maybe it's a, a cry room or, a, or a, a nursery area, everything else that's not in your room, we wanna build a separate mix for. Now, we've got plenty of videos that talk about two different options. You can go with a stereo mix bus or you can go with a stereo matrix. Whatever you choose, those are the two main options for taking a mix out of the board and sending it somewhere else. So as we dive into this, we'll take a quick look at what I've got here on the right hand side. Uh, these are my DCAs, uh, so those don't really make a difference for us, but buses. For me, I've got six buses that are designated to in-ear monitors for the band. Then I have a stereo pair here that's in blue, and that is for my drums, and that's only for the house. The next layer down, I've got a stereo pair, which is for the band. That also is only for the house. Then I have a stereo pair here in red. This is my live stream mix. This is a post fader live stream mix. And then the last four are the buses that feed my effects. Um, I've got a uh, high-end reverb for the, uh, for the vocals. Then I've got a drum reverb. I've got reverb that everything that's on stage goes through, and then a delay that is for my vocals. If you haven't seen the videos, I do have a full breakdown of this entire scene. We go through EQ, compression, uh, effects, all of that stuff for different groups, whether it's the band or for the vocals, um, everything, the drums included. We go uh, video by video. That's a playlist. I'll link that down in the description for you if you're interested in checking that out. So we, we pick a stereo mix bus. We set that to post fader and if I select that and then I hit sends on fader, you'll see that now I have 
a mix that is going over to the mix bus. So we've designated that. This happens to be mix bus 11 and 12, and they are linked. So we have a stereo pair that allows us to pan things left and right within this uh, group of buses. We also have the ability that our effects when returned and sent into this bus, those effects will stay in stereo, which is a really, really good thing. But let's dive into the screen up here and talk about how we would set all of this stuff up to be recorded through the thumb drive as well as sent out to multiple places. All right, so as we get started, we're gonna take a standard thumb drive. Do make sure that your thumb drive is formatted, formatted to FAT32, which is a standard Windows formatting. Uh, we can stick that in and notice that there's a view button. This view button is a great tool to learn. Each little section has a view button. And so I'm going to hit the view button and it's going to bring up the old school tape recorder. Now, what we'll notice is that in the top left here, mine says Mix Bus 11 and 12. I have mine set up already to record my live stream as opposed to my house mix. Now, how do you do that? Notice we've got a home and a config tab. We're just going to use the arrow over to get to the config tab. And now we have left, and if we push it, right. So left, we can come down and use these encoders. I've selected mix bus 11. And then I chose the tap point, which is gonna be post fader. And then if I push again, uh, I've got mix bus, I've moved down to 12 and push post fader. Now that's gonna grab this mix bus. Now, if you've watched my actual setup, you'll know that I actually send my mix bus to a matrix and that gets my limiter before it goes out to my actual live stream. So right now, what I'm gonna do is change that. So I'm gonna go to matrix. I'm gonna select matrix one, post fader. Oop, let's try that again, post fader. And so now stream left is from matrix one. That's, oh, and see, I messed up. I'm on the right hand side. Let's set this to matrix two, post fader. I'm gonna click this, go back to the left side. We'll make this matrix one, post fader. So now if I go and arrow back over to the home screen, you'll see that I have matrix one and two up here, which is the source that will be recorded onto this thumb drive. Now, a couple other things to note, if we go back over here to the right, you do have some volume or trim compensation. So I can turn this up to zero uh, for left and for right. If I needed to turn it down, if the mix is way too hot or way too soft, you can compensate. You could turn this up 10 dB, let's say, uh, if you needed to. And that way you would have your signal coming into your matrix, which is leaving the console, but for the recording, you could add 10 dB to it in case you were doing that in post-production or some other tool. So I'm gonna turn this back down just in case I happen to copy this scene and send it somewhere else. So we'll go back to the home screen. And now at this point, all I need to do at the beginning of my event is hit the record button. You'll see that the thumb drive starts to blink and it's recording. Now I wanna give you a caution here. If you mix your entire event, you are probably not gonna be looking at that screen. You're gonna be mixing, you're using the faders. At the end of the event, if you shut your console down, nothing gets recorded. You have to make sure that you go back in and you hit the stop button. That stop button, it'll continue to blink on the thumb drive until that file has completed its rendering process. And then you'll see up here that you do have a track which is a WAV file which has been recorded. You can now take the thumb drive, you've got that recording on your thumb drive, and you're ready to do whatever you want with it. Now, Steven's question was about how do we send the mix out of the console to his CD recorder. Thumb drive is a great option, might cause additional steps, and so what we're gonna do, come back here to the home screen, and then we're gonna go to routing. The routing screen is where we talk about what things leave this console. Uh, I'll post a link up here and in the description. I do have a video that goes through all of the general overview of this routing screen. 
But what we're going to look at right now is what is leaving through the auxiliary outs. Uh, I just did a church that had a CD recorder, and they were sending CD recording out of RCAs. So RCAs are auxiliary out five and six that we have as options. So we're going to page over here to the routing aux tab. This determines what we send out of our auxiliaries, and I can come down here to aux out five. Then I can use this encoder and I can find, for me again, it's matrix, but maybe it's bus 11 and 12 for you. So I can go to matrix one, and I'm taking post fader, and then I can push to take me down to auxiliary out six, matrix two, select, post fader. So now all I need to do is plug in the RCA cables to auxiliary out five and six, send those to my CD recorder, make sure I hit record and do my normal CD recorder things. That same mix now is gonna be captured on the thumb drive as well as your CD recorder. Now do keep in mind that auxiliary out five and six also offers quarter inch outputs as well. So instead of RCAs, if you have a quarter inch being sent, you can go ahead and use that quarter inch and send that out. Now let's take a quick look and talk about if you only wanna send a mono mix. Maybe your connection is only mono, and so you're sending now stereo, which is great, but if you have things panned, you're gonna be missing some of that signal. So let's back up a step and talk about how we would send uh, a stereo mix into a mono thing in the board, switch it to mono, combine the two, and send them out. So if we wanna set up this mono mix, and we have our mix built here at bus 11 and 12, that's a stereo mix, we could send that to the CD recorder, we could send it to the thumb drive, we can do that in stereo, but again, if we wanna sum this stereo pair down to a mono mix, the easiest way to do that is come to the matrix layer, uh, we'll use matrix three in this example. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that up to zero, to unity, and then I'm gonna hit sends on fader. Now you're not gonna see anything change over here on the left. When I hit sends on fader, it all stays the same because again, a mix bus is a mix of inputs. A matrix is a mix of buses. So we have to come down to the bus layers on the far left-hand side, which is our fourth layer down. And now all we have to do is take our live stream buses, bring this up, and we're gonna feed that at Unity into our matrix number three. So now our stereo mix can go out, or we can send this to a mono uh, matrix, and then that matrix will dive back up to the screen and show you how to route that out. You can probably figure it out, but we'll go through the steps here in just a second for you. All right, so now that we have matrix three is what I have designated here. Matrix three is set up to send out of our, um, it's, it's gonna combine our stereo mix bus for our stream. We're going to combine it down to mono in the matrix. That's what the matrix is gonna do for us. And now instead of sending uh, matrix one and two or mix bus 11 and 12, we're just gonna come up here. I'm gonna clear this out so that we go back to what it was set up for. And I'm just gonna pick auxiliary out six. And auxiliary out six, I'm gonna choose matrix. I'm gonna choose matrix three, post fader. And you'll see now that matrix three is being sent to aux out six. Again, you still have the RCA or the quarter inch capability, but that's gonna send a mono mix out of the board over to that recording device. You still have the capability, remember, that on this thumb drive, that's getting a stereo mix. So you've got all kinds of versatility that you can do, and I hope that you can find something here that's gonna be beneficial for you. All right, so that's some information about how to use that onboard USB thumb drive recorder, as well as create that mix that we're gonna then send out to a CD recorder or some other recording device.
So I hope this has been helpful. Hit the thumbs up, give it a like, share this video, make sure to subscribe. We've got plenty of other content. And if you've got questions, go ahead and put those down in the comment section below. It may end up as a Q&A video just like this one. Also, if you're looking for any of the cables or materials that I tend to use at most of my installs, you can find those on the Amazon shop that is linked below as well. And finally, if you'd like to work together one-on-one -on -one outside of YouTube, uh, there's a link for for my website, which has a contact card. You can fill that out and we'll start a conversation outside of YouTube. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for checking it out. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.